18. Shachoria Alley An argument about espresso shots at an airport cafe erupted into reckless violence in early 2024, when a worker named Shachoria Ellie lost her temper and had to be physically restrained by her managers. The incident occurred at harvesting grounds inside Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport, where an onlooker captured footage of the managers trying to stop Ellie from going back behind the counter. In the video, Ellie could be heard screaming at the managers to give back her stuff, while various products were spilled onto the floor. She charged at one of them and was swiftly knocked to the ground, but got right back up and continued charging at them. At one point, she picked up a stool, but one of the managers was able to grab it out of her hands before she could do any damage with it. She even slapped a manager, and she repeatedly tried forcing her way behind the counter. Ellie began walking away as if she'd given up the fight, only to turn back around and make one final run for the cafe's back area. This time, she jumped over the counter before anyone could stop her and grabbed her things. As a manager tried removing her from the scene, she grabbed a pan and struck him in the back while aiming at his head. Police were called to the scene, but Ellie was gone by the time an officer arrived. She was fired from her job, but no arrests were made. After getting physical, she got off easy. 17. Government Worker Batters Boss a Chinese government worker became understandably frustrated when her boss sent her unwanted text messages. Known only as Zhao, the woman eventually became fed up. So, in 2021, she stormed into her boss's office and attacked him with a mop. Footage of the encounter showed the angry employee striking her boss, known only as Wang, in the head three times. She stomped to give him a piece of her mind, then struck him again. According to news reports, Wang was the deputy director of the Balin District's Poverty Alleviation Department. He remained stoically calm during the attack, which appeared to be over when Zhao exited the office, only to re-enter a few moments later. She poked Wang in the face with the mob several times and wasn't interested in hearing his apology, which came with the claim that the text messages were meant as a joke. Zhao accused her boss of assault, struck him with the mop twice, then smashed a picture frame over his head and hurled some books at him. She splashed some water in Wang's face, then shoved his computer monitor toward him. In addition to physically attacking Wang, Zhao filed a police report. Wang was found to have life discipline problems following an internal investigation, whatever that means. And while Zhao was not disciplined for her actions, she was found to be mentally ill. 16. Ashley Priola 26-year-old exotic dancer Ashley Priola showed up drunk at her job in Oklahoma City in 2019, but she was given permission to hit the stage despite her inebriated state. However, it didn't last long. It soon became abundantly clear just how drunk she was when she fell over twice. Her boss told her to go home, and she was accused of reacting by chucking a billiard ball at the manager's face. According to witness reports, Priola threw a second ball, which narrowly missed the manager. She then fled the scene, but was found at a convenience store located in the back of the saloon. During the ride to jail for assault and battery charges, Priola reportedly cried hysterically and offered the police all of her money while begging them to take her home. When this failed to get her off the hook, she allegedly started banging her head against the window in an apparent attempt to break it. But none of these outrageous behaviors worked to her benefit. In the end, she was booked into custody until it was time to see a judge. 15. Naomi Wheeler During her first year working at the Blue Dolphin Holiday Park in the English town of Filey, Naomi Wheeler established herself as a reliable employee with no disciplinary issues. Her good standing took a wrong turn at some point in 2019, when she began misinterpreting text messages from her boss, Heather Wilkinson. The text messages were sent to all staff members, but Wheeler apparently thought they were exclusive to her and began to mistakenly believe that Wilkinson wanted a relationship with her. She took it as a green light to develop feelings and soon became obsessed with Wilkinson, who actually wasn't interested in a relationship at all. Wilkinson maintained a professional demeanor while avoiding Wheeler, whose behavior became increasingly obsessive. The park eventually fired Wheeler and banned her from the property, but this had no effect on her attachment to Wilkinson. 
Over a four-month period, she barraged her former boss with phone calls, text messages, and a card in the mail that was spritzed with perfume. Her behavior eventually escalated to harassment and death threats. Wheeler was also obsessed with one of her former teachers, and she was eventually referred to a psychologist who was tasked with helping her manage her emotions and develop better relationship skills. During one session in June of 2021, she told her therapist that she wanted to hurt Wilkinson and her former teacher. As the therapist called the police, Wheeler slipped out of the office and headed to the Blue Dolphin Park. She approached a security guard who didn't recognize her and was unaware that she had been banned from the property. Apparently, she said she was there for a job interview with Wilkinson. The guard pointed her in Wilkinson's direction, and Wheeler charged at her former boss with a hammer in her hand. Thankfully, though, another employee tackled her before she could cause any harm. While under psychiatric care following the incident, Wheeler made it clear that she did not regret her actions. She even told a nurse that she got a buzz from the look of fear on Wilkinson's face. In court, prosecutors argued that Wheeler was a threat to society and that prison was the only appropriate place for her. She admitted to stalking, making threats to kill, and a weapon-related charge in front of the judge. And as a result, she was sentenced to four years behind bars, followed by two years of supervision. 14. Caleb Burchick 29-year-old Caleb Burchick was laid off from his job for a company that maintains oil and gas wells in North Dakota when his boss, Robert Allen Thomas, went to work for another employer in early 2020. Nine months later, on Christmas Eve, Burchick sent Thomas a friend request on Facebook. He quickly became impatient with the lack of a response and began sending Thomas harassing and threatening messages. One such message apparently said, Accept my friend request or I'm going to murder you. When two more days passed with no response, Burchick cautioned Thomas that there would be trouble if he had to get into his pickup truck and find his former boss. He then allegedly acted on the threat by driving to Thomas's house and kicking in his front door. The incident was captured on surveillance footage and was witnessed by household members, who dialed 911 when Thomas entered their home. Burchick was arrested at the scene and was charged with burglary and terrorizing. The outcome of the case is unclear, but state records show that he's not currently serving time in prison. 13. Matthew C. Gistinger It's understandable for someone to get upset when they're fired from their job, but 26-year-old Matthew C. Gistinger took his emotions to a disturbing level when he was canned at a construction site in Bisbee, Arizona. Gistinger was part of a crew that was working to renovate an old high school into an apartment building. His boss, Brent Roosevelt Hester, fired him and told him to leave the property. But instead of complying, Gistinger pointed a gun in Hester's face and stole his cell phone. Despite his alarming behavior, Hester told the disgruntled former employee to go home and calm down. He promised not to call the police, but maybe he should have, because things were about to get much worse. The next afternoon, Gistinger entered the property in a newly purchased outfit meant to resemble a UPS driver's uniform. He also had a 22 caliber rifle in his hand. He proceeded to shoot Hester several times, killing him at the scene, then dialed 911 and reported his actions to the police. Gistinger tried to evade capture, but was apprehended and was charged with murder, as well as several other crimes. He gave a detailed confession that was consistent with what was captured by surveillance cameras and eventually pleaded guilty. The court sentenced him to life with the eligibility for parole after 25 years, along with a seven and a half year sentence for aggravated assault. 12. Luke Shelton 20-year-old Luke Shelton worked for a 58-year-old rancher named John David Vieira in Austin, Colorado. He reported to his job in early 2024 on a morning that began like any other, but by the end of the day, he was in police custody. Shortly before 10 a.m., law enforcement received a call from someone at the ranch saying that their boss had been shot. Responding deputies were met by two ranch hands and proceeded to find Vieira unresponsive and partially buried. He had sustained three gunshot wounds from a 45 caliber pistol, including one to the head, and sadly, he died from his injuries. 
According to an arrest affidavit, Shelton repeatedly discussed his hatred for his boss on both a personal and professional level. Shelton also allegedly claimed that he conspired with a friend to kill Vieira as part of a plot to split the rancher's assets. Once he killed his boss, he planned to wait three months before reporting Vieira missing. But the murder wasn't planned for that day according to Shelton, who said that he snapped when his boss pushed him too far. He apologized for his alleged action, stating, I guess it wasn't worth murdering over money. Shelton and a co-worker slept in Vieira's truck while working on the property in five-day stretches. He revealed to the co-worker that he hated Vieira and complained about his pay not being punctual. After the shooting, the co-worker told investigators that Shelton had ordered him at gunpoint to help bury Vieira. Fearing for his life, he volunteered to get an excavator, but instead fled the property and called the police. Authorities charged Shelton with first-degree murder and tampering with a body. He remains behind bars on a $500,000 bond. 11. Ronald Second Jarko In November of 2022, a 49-year-old FedEx driver named Ronald Second Jarko was suspended from his job for failing to pay for fuel during his previous shift. He was experiencing financial difficulties at the time, and he was already upset with FedEx because he mistakenly believed the company had not paid him properly. The news of his suspension was enough to send Second Jarko off the deep end the very next day. Armed with two knives and a hammer, he confronted a group of managers at a FedEx depot in the English town of Hellaby in Rotherham. Deputy station manager Philip Woodcock attempted to de-escalate the situation, but his efforts did little to ease the tension. Instead of calming down, Second Jacko stabbed the 60-year-old three times. Woodcock died from a stab wound to the heart, and Second Jacko was charged with his murder. Second Jaco maintained his innocence throughout the case, despite witnesses to the murder and other evidence which pointed overwhelmingly toward his guilt. In 2023, a jury convicted him of murder, as well as assault occasioning actual bodily harm, and three weapon-related counts. As punishment, he was sentenced to life with a minimum of 27 years in prison. 10. Feng Lu a family of four was found slaughtered inside their Cypress, Texas home in January of 2014 by deputies who were performing a welfare check in response to reports about a foul odor. 54-year-old Maui Sun, his wife, 49-year-old Mei Zie, and their two sons had each been shot in the head execution style. The community was shaken by the tragedy, but it would take eight years before they received long-awaited answers about who killed the family and why. In the meantime, rumors circulated in both the US and China about the possibility of a professional hit. For years, the investigation sat at a standstill, despite a reward being offered in exchange for information leading to an arrest. Finally, though, in 2022, authorities charged a 58-year-old suspect named Feng Lu with capital murder. The suspect was arrested upon entering the United States on a flight from China. Lu was allegedly a disgruntled former employee of Maui's son who became upset when he wasn't recommended for a promotion. The two reportedly worked together at a shipping company called Cameron International. The suspect told investigators that it asked Sun for a promotion and a transfer to a different department, but he later heard that Sun had not recommended him. When he called his boss to ask why he wasn't considered for the position, Sun allegedly insisted that he had recommended Lou for the desired job. Lou said that when he returned to work, he felt like his co-workers were treating him differently. He also suspected that Sun had made a derogatory remark about him, and this caused his anger to take off like a runaway train. Two days before the quadruple murder, Lou bought the gun that he allegedly killed the victims with. As of November 2022, Lou remained held on a $5 million bond, but unfortunately, the current status of the case is unclear. 9. Mason Tony For several years now, the political situation in the United States has caused deep divisions among the American people, even causing breakups between couples and tearing friendships apart. This appears to be the case with 28-year-old construction worker Mason Tony and his boss, William Knight, who were childhood friends with opposing political beliefs. Tony, 
who said to harbor anti-government views, allegedly became irate during an argument with his pro-Trump supervisor during their drive to a work site along a turnpike ramp near Orlando. According to an arrest affidavit, workers overheard Knight yelling for help shortly after the men arrived at the site. They rushed over to find Tony standing overnight and repeatedly stabbing him with a trowel. Ironically, an American flag was draped next to the victim's body. Witnesses attempted to intervene, but it was too late to save Knight's life. By the time police arrived, Tony had left the scene in a vehicle. He was arrested after crashing his truck during a brief chase and has remained behind bars at the Orange County Jail on a pending first-degree murder charge ever since. The victim's mother, Julia Knight, told local station WFTV9 that her son had helped Tony get the job just two weeks earlier after hearing that his longtime friend needed work. In keeping with his tendency to help anyone who needed it, Knight also provided Tony with daily rides to and from the job site, unaware that he would soon pay for his kindness with his life. 8. Michael Baltimore the GQ Barbershop in Carlisle, Pennsylvania was featured in several scenes during season 4 of 90 Day Fiancé's Happily Ever After spin-off. One of these show's cast members worked at the business alongside Michael Baltimore, who also appeared in several scenes. The season was filmed in 2016. Fast forward six years later to 2022, and Baltimore had landed himself on the United States Marshal's most wanted list for allegedly murdering his boss, Kendall Jerome Cook. According to authorities, Baltimore opened fire on Cook inside the barbershop in May of 2021, killing his boss and seriously injuring another victim. Authorities warned that he had a violent past and that he should be considered armed and dangerous. Multiple agencies offered rewards for information totaling at least $37,000, including the FBI, Crime Stoppers, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. A few months after appearing on the U.S. Marshal's Most Wanted list, Baltimore's case was escalated to the top 15 most wanted. Baltimore remained on the run for seven months before finally being captured in Broward County, Florida in early 2023. According to reports, the 44-year-old fled from a bar after getting into a fight involving a knife and making threats to shoot someone. He was pulled over by police a short while later. Cops found 2.3 grams of fentanyl, 200 grams of marijuana, 818 ecstasy pills, and a loaded gun and a fake ID in Baltimore's possession. The fugitive also allegedly gave the police a fake name. But the truth was revealed later on when his identity was confirmed through his fingerprints. Baltimore faces a multitude of state and federal charges. In Florida, he stands accused of battery, possession of fentanyl, trafficking ecstasy, possession of marijuana with intent to sell, and possession of a weapon by a felon. But that's not all. He was also hit with charges of displaying a firearm, providing false identification to a law enforcement official, and three counts of use of false information to obtain a driver's license. In addition, he faces federal charges of assault, homicide, and parole violation. In October of 2023, prosecutors announced their plans to seek the death penalty in the ongoing case against Baltimore. But we'll have to see how things play out in the coming months. 7. Felix Cabrera After 31 years of fateful service as a janitor at a sugar mill in Belle Glade, Florida, 86-year-old Felix Cabrera was released from the position. He approached his superiors in 2021 and asked if he could work there for another year for financial reasons. But when the request was turned down, Cabrera allegedly pulled out a handgun and fatally shot his boss. 67-year-old William Combas had told Cabrera to clock out and never return, despite the janitor's desire to remain employed at the mill. Combas was shot several times and died at the scene. Both men were well liked at the workplace, with Combas being remembered as a respected manager and devoted family man, and Cabrera was described as easygoing and likable. At first, authorities believed the shooting was a simple cut-and-dry case of a disgruntled employee losing their temper. But Cabrera's lawyers argued that the situation was more complicated than that and that their client may have grounds for a self-defense claim. Nobody witnessed the shooting, so there wasn't exactly evidence to the contrary. 
According to news reports, Cabrera was a Cuban exile who had moved to the United States in 1980. He had outlived his entire family, and his life revolved around the sugar mill, which could possibly help to explain why he became so upset when he was fired. As of early 2024, he remains in custody on suspicion of first-degree murder and is currently receiving mental health treatment. 6. Eric Gadsen When 31-year-old Eric Gadsen allegedly kept showing up drunk to his job at a fried chicken restaurant in Jersey City, New Jersey, his boss eventually got fed up. He was fired one afternoon in October 2012 after working there for just two months. Gadsden allegedly reacted by punching his boss in the face with so much force it knocked the victim to the ground. According to an arrest report, he then also stole nearly $60 from the cash register before fleeing the scene. The boss's girlfriend, who was working in the restaurant at the time, said that she told Gansen she wouldn't call the police if he put the cash back in the register, but he reportedly refused, saying, I don't care, call the police, and that's exactly what they did. The restaurant owner refused medical attention despite suffering a swollen and bleeding jaw. Gadsen returned to the restaurant several hours later and was arrested on suspicion of aggravated assault and theft. According to police, Gadsen denied robbing anyone and claimed that he only took money that was owed to him. 5. Gabriel DeWitt Wilson The lives of staff and shoppers at a supermarket in Long Island, New York were forever changed in April of 2021, when a disgruntled former employee entered the store and went on a shooting rampage. 31-year-old Gabriel DeWitt Wilson was working at a stop and shop in West Hempstead as a card pusher when he got into a heated argument with his manager at around 10 a.m. He went back outside and continued doing his job until about an hour later when he made his way up to the store's second floor management offices and began spraying bullets. Three victims were shot, including an employee who took bullets to the chest and shoulder and a manager who was struck in the shoulder. But luckily, they both survived. Wilson then shot his supervisor, 49-year-old father of six Ray Wishrom, who died from his injuries. The gunman fled the scene and was captured roughly four hours later at a nearby apartment complex. At the time, Wilson already had a lengthy criminal history dating back to 2006, which included previous arrests for gun possession. He was found guilty of second-degree murder and two counts each of attempted murder, assault, and a gun-related charge. In the end, the judge sentenced Wilson to serve 50 years to life in prison. 4. Lloyd Love Jr. 35-year-old Lloyd Love Jr. was less than a week into his new job as a security guard in Aurora, Colorado in 2022 when he was unable to cash a $165 paycheck because his name was misspelled on it. So he ripped up the check and confronted his boss, 52-year-old Marvin Johnson and Johnson's wife. Marvin was in the middle of asking his wife to issue a new check when the disgruntled new hire allegedly shot him in the head. He had his girlfriend pick him up and wouldn't tell her what had happened, but said that he did something stupid. Love faces a first-degree murder charge, but his sister, Tiffany, said that it never would have happened if the authorities hadn't released him from custody months earlier when he was arrested for assaulting her. He was originally held on a $25,000 bond, which would have kept him locked up according to his sister, who said that her brother was homeless and had no way to come up with that amount of money. But Love's defense attorney convinced the judge to release him without bail. Tiffany told local station KDVR that she begged the court not to let him out of jail because she feared he might seriously harm someone. She said that he suffered from untreated mental health issues, including schizophrenia. Love's ex-wife, Lisa Terriot, said that she also doesn't understand why he was free to commit the crime he's being accused of, which cost an innocent person their life. 3. Philip Hollingsworth the truth about what happened when 45-year-old Philip Hollingsworth shot his boss in the head may never be known. At the time, he was both living with and working for Bill Ardis, who owned a roofing company in Greenwood, South Carolina. Hollingsworth's girlfriend, Shayla Gaines, was also living at the victim's residence in the town of Waterloo. According to investigators, the shooting occurred at around 2 a.m. in November of 2012. 
By the time Gaines reported the incident to police several hours later, Ardis was dead and Hollingsworth was on the run. Local schools were placed on lockdown as law enforcement embarked on a manhunt to find the accused killer. Hollingsworth was captured the next day and was booked into custody on a murder charge. He was found guilty by a jury in 2014 and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. He passed away three years later in 2017. Gaines was charged as an accessory after the fact for allegedly helping Hollingsworth move the body. She was also hit with a grand larceny charge. While the outcome of her case is unclear, records show that she was arrested again in 2019 on a multitude of drug charges. 2. Willie Parker 46-year-old Willie Parker and his boss were transporting medical patients in two separate vehicles in Kansas City, Kansas one day in 2015 when they got into a violent disagreement in a parking garage. Parker crossed paths with Michelle Ziad at around noon and complained about his schedule and having to work overnight shifts. Ziad had a beef of his own with Parker, who he accused of running late to pick up a patient. The argument escalated into a fistfight, and according to witnesses, Parker was doing all of the hitting and punching. A bystander separated the men, and Ziad asked someone to call the police. Parker went to his vehicle and was gone for about a minute before he began charging towards Ziad with a pistol in his hand. Ziad attempted to run away, but he was shot several times. As he collapsed on the pavement, Parker approached him and fired one more shot while standing over him. The shooting happened right next to a hospital and Ziad received almost immediate care, but one of the bullets had pierced his heart. So sadly, he died from his injuries. After the fact, authorities launched a manhunt for Parker, who was tracked to a church about a week later. Parker barricaded himself inside the church, sparking a six-hour standoff that finally ended after police deployed tear gas into the building, forcing the suspect to come outside. During questioning, Parker admitted to shooting Ziad. A professional evaluator detected signs of mental illness, but determined that Parker was competent to stand trial. But he refused to cooperate with any court-appointed lawyers, and the case dragged its heels for two years before finally going to trial in 2017. The jury found Parker guilty of premeditated first-degree murder, and he was sentenced to life in prison with no parole for at least 50 years. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. One. Dennis B. Lenzner Jr. A father and his two sons were all working for the same employer when they allegedly attacked their boss in May of 2022. 51-year-old Dennis Lenzner Jr. was accused of starting the altercation by striking the victim during an argument at a job site in Port Townsend, Washington. The boss had told Lenzner and his two sons, who were 18 and 21 at the time, to leave the work site. But instead of complying, the 18-year-old son allegedly walked toward the boss in an aggressive fashion and began calling him names. When the boss told him to stay out of it, he reportedly made a remark about how the lenses stink together. And at that point, the 21-year-old struck the victim on the head. The victim fell backwards, and a fight ensued between him and Lentzner's sons before Lentzner struck him twice with the hammer. Another employee intervened and grabbed the hammer out of Lenzner's hand, and that's when the suspects left the scene in a vehicle. Police stopped the vehicle as the men drove to their home in Sequin. Lenzner allegedly admitted to fighting with his boss, but denied striking the victim with a hammer, even though some of the man's injuries were consistent with having been hit with the tool. The suspect also accused his boss of charging at his son with the lid of a toolbox. Despite his denial, Lenzner handed over the suspected weapon involved in the altercation to police. He was arrested for felony assault with a deadly weapon, and his sons were also hit with lesser assault charges. Lenzner pleaded not guilty to the charge, which can carry a prison sentence of up to 10 years if convicted. But unfortunately, there have been no updates on the case since before it went to trial, leaving the outcome of the situation unclear. 10. Laundry Dispute It all began with an argument over laundry. Two brothers got into a dispute over whose turn it was to wash a load of laundry. 
at which point one of the brothers threw a potted plant at the other one. Shane Fennell, the one who threw the plant, worked himself into such a frenzy that he then pulled out a gun and shot his brother's wife in the face. A neighbor heard the gunshot and went to see what happened. He saw Shane flailing his arms wildly in the yard, where his chrome-plated revolver sat on the front lawn and his brother's wife lay dead. The neighbor told Shane to sit down and wait while the situation was sorted out. He ran inside to call the police. The cops eventually arrived on the scene where Shane was still sitting in the grass, looking absolutely sick with himself. While speaking with police detective Ryan Foote, the innocent brother said that he couldn't believe his eyes when Shane pulled the gun, walked over to his wife, Alexandra Arb Bloodgood, and shot her in the back of the head at close range. It's amazing that a simple argument over laundry could cause such chaos. Shane never did reveal any motive other than pure anger and confusion. But that didn't stop the courts from charging him with second-degree murder in the violent overreaction. 9. The Toy Collection A crazy person obsessed with Star Wars has choked his Thai bride to death after she destroyed his collection of toys. According to the murderer, 30-year-old Licky Latouche, his wife had gotten angry with him during an argument then destroyed his Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker memorabilia, toys that he had been collecting since he was a small child. He was thrown into such a ludicrous fit of rage by what his wife did that he grabbed hold of her throat and strangled her to death. His wife was named Pornpele Srisroy. The pair had met at a bar while Ricky was on vacation in Bangkok back in 2001. They married after his fourth visit in 2003, and two years later she was living with him in the UK. But as most of us know, these types of unions often just don't work out anyway. He had turned into kind of a psycho with a penchant for domestic violence. His wife was fed up. She was threatening to leave, and so she smashed his toys to make a point. In retaliation, he killed her. After the horrible attack, Ricky went immediately to his mom's house. He confessed to his mother what he had done. Since there was no way he could get away with it, she convinced him to turn himself into the police. He has since been sentenced to a minimum of 12 years. 8. Machete Walmart Attack when you go to Walmart, it's best to just keep to yourself, buy whatever you came to buy, and get out of there quickly. If not, you could end up like the 43-year-old man who was nearly slashed to death with a machete after getting into an argument with another customer while shopping at Walmart. Authorities had to be called to the North Jersey store just after 10.30 in the morning, where they found a local resident with a deep cut across the back of his head and the suspect nowhere to be found. The victim was rushed to the hospital with a serious injury, though he did make a full recovery and was eventually released. According to what he told police, he had been standing in line in the electronics department when he started arguing with another customer. He couldn't remember what exactly started the argument, but it got heated enough that the attacker pulled out a machete from under his clothes and tried to cut the guy's head off. Obviously, this created panic in the store. People were screaming and trampling over each other to get away. In all the chaos, the attacker escaped. Amazingly, the cops still haven't managed to track this guy down and arrest him. They're actually asking the public to call them with any information about the attack. Just imagine trying to cut someone's head off in a Walmart and then walking away with no repercussions. In this case, that's exactly what happened. 7. Changing the Station a rideshare driver, a guy working for Uber, has gotten into some serious trouble after a heated argument resulting in him killing one of his passengers. According to his attorney, Jackie Patterson, the driver, 
was simply trying to make a living for himself with rideshare when his life was flipped completely upside down. The driver said he had pulled over to call the police because three of his passengers were refusing to get out of his car. They had been arguing with him to change the radio station. When the driver refused to change the station, they pulled out a gun. He tried to let them out, scared for his own life, but they weren't moving. He was terrified as his passengers waved the gun around. Then he pulled his own weapon out and shot them. One of them died and the other two escaped. This is a classic case of self-defense, but the driver is nonetheless being charged with manslaughter. The other two passengers, the ones that weren't shot to death, have been charged with battery. We don't know how this case is going to turn out, but there's definitely a lesson to be learned here. If you get into an Uber, maybe just leave the driver and their radio station alone. What do you think should happen to the driver? Let us know in the comments below and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 6. Fans and Cheesesteaks In South Philadelphia at a locally famous restaurant called Pat's King of Steaks, a conversation between soccer fans turned into a brawl, which left a man dead, his father injured, and another man in serious condition. According to the owner of the restaurant, Frank Olivieri, it was absolute mayhem. It was late on a Thursday night and everyone was eating cheesecakes and minding their own business. But then, Isidro Cortes, his 64-year-old father, and one of his friends began arguing with a group of four sitting near them. The argument was about soccer, with the attackers being fans of Club America, who had just gotten beat by the Mexico City team. They apparently took the defeat very personally, attacking the men with their fists and even a metal trash can lid. The people being attacked just didn't have the skills they needed to defend themselves. It wasn't a fight, it was a massacre. The manager of the restaurant called the police, which caused the attackers to quickly flee, but the damage had already been done. When police arrived, Isidro Cortes was found dead. The cause of death was blunt force trauma. And believe it or not, this was the second time that someone was killed at this restaurant in just the past two months. The previous July, a guy named David Pedro Jr. was shot outside the front doors during an argument gone wrong over a parking space. 5. Child Services A woman in Montana was just sentenced to spend her next 40 years in prison. Why? Because she strangled her boyfriend with a rope after an argument in which he threatened to call Child Protective Services on one of her family members. The guilty party is Sandy Rose Moore, only 19 years old at the time of the killing. She has pleaded guilty to mitigated deliberate homicide in the death of Larry Kuhn. They were living together in a rental home in the town of Dillon. And according to what she told police, she knew exactly what she was doing when she was killing him. But she just couldn't help herself, because she was in extreme duress following the argument. Prior to the killing, she had been in desperate need of treatment for her mental health issues. But she never did get that treatment, and her sick state of mind eventually led to her committing this murder. And even though she admitted that she did wrong and that there was no real excuse for it, she will still spend the rest of her life in jail. 4. Stabbing the Security At an Apple store in Chelsea, Manhattan, an argument led to a violent attack that left one guy bleeding out from stab wounds and a female employee with bruises all over her face. According to a statement from police, a dispute erupted on Friday evening when an unidentified attacker and the security guard got into it over wearing a mask in the store. Apparently, the shopper didn't really feel like putting on his mask, so the security guard didn't want to let him in. The maskless individual got so upset that he slapped the security guard in the face and then walked away. But what seemed like the end of a bad situation was only the beginning of an even worse situation. The man came back to the store minutes later, punched a 25-year-old female employee in the face, 
then pulled out a knife. He slashed the guard across his forehead, then repositioned himself and started stabbing. He punctured the security guard's arm and back with his knife before fleeing on foot. Thankfully, the security guard was taken to the local hospital and treated for his wounds. The store employee suffered swelling to her face from being punched, but did not need medical attention. And yet again, the police were unable to track down and apprehend the attacker. They don't know who he is, they don't know how to find him, and he's currently loose and at large. 3. Gone Postal There's just something about postal workers taking things a little too far. In this most recent case of going postal, a USPS worker got into an argument with a guy at a gas station and then shot him. According to the victim, Darren Jackson, the incident began with the USPS man accidentally bumping into him. This happened outside of a Chevron gas station in Houston, Texas. Both individuals were simply there to get some gas. Darren told ABC 13 News that instead of letting the bump go, he wanted to teach the USPS worker something about how to respect people. But when he confronted the worker, the mailman simply flipped out. It turned into an argument, the argument escalated, and the postal worker pulled out a gun. He didn't just shoot Darren Jackson once, but twice. He hit him once in the arm and a second time in the chest, with a bullet only narrowly missing his heart. Darren now has a great big hole in his chest. To make the story even sadder, Darren Jackson couldn't really afford to stay at the hospital. After he was treated, just hours after taking two bullets, he was forced to walk over a mile and a half back to the gas station to retrieve his vehicle. The USPS worker, who hasn't been named, is now facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Amazingly, he's not facing an attempted murder charge, even though he tried to shoot Darren Jackson in the heart. The public is in an outrage because the USPS worker seems to be getting special treatment, probably because they worked for the government. 2. Fighting with Dad An argument between father and son has led to one of them getting life in prison while the other is getting a coffin. Kenneth John Boone of Spring Lake, just 27 years old, is now due to spend the rest of his life in prison all because of a dispute that he had with his own father. Police say that Boone bludgeoned his dad to death on December 1, 2019. Judge John Hulsing said during the sentencing hearing that the act was pure evil and that the brutality exhibited was indescribable. The judge was quick to hand down the maximum sentence. But just what exactly happened to push this kid over the edge? On the morning of the murder, Boone had actually called the police to ask for their assistance with his father because they were in a serious fight. But the police never sent a deputy to the home. When Boone called back an hour later, his father was dead. The police got to the scene pretty quickly after they found Boone wandering down the road soaked in blood. We don't know exactly what the two were arguing about, but it did come up during the trial that Boone had serious mental issues. Along with his prison sentence, the judge ordered that he receive mental health treatment. Though to be honest, that's probably not going to do him much good, stuck in a jail cell for the next 60 years. 1. Arguing on the Playground an argument in a Bronx playground between two 13-year-old boys ended in bloodshed. The boys had been arguing with one another through text messages, but the argument soon went from virtual to physical. When the teens got into it on the playground at about 5.30 in the evening, the text fight sprung up after the two began bickering with each other for no reason on the Snapchat app. But the one boy, whose name has not been released because he's a minor, was so fed up with fighting on the app that he brought a gun to the yeah. playground and shot the other boy in the knee. Luckily, the wound wasn't fatal and the kid made a full recovery. The shooter got away and the police were never able to track him down. It wasn't until the shooter's mom saw her son's face on a wanted poster that she grabbed her kid and took him into the police station. 
He has since been charged with attempted murder, assault, and harassment. But because the shooter is a minor, he's being processed through family court. We have no idea what kind of sentence the judge is going to hand down. Number 10. Stalked and Killed A dancer in Texas discovered a tracking device on a car, likely placed there by the very stalker that followed her down a highway and shot her to death in her very own vehicle. The young woman, a mother, who worked as an exotic dancer at Rick's Cabaret and had been stalked and harassed by one of her clients. In late 2021, police in Fort Worth responded to an accident on Highway 183. That was when they found the young woman dead in her car. Witnesses saw a silver Hyundai sedan speed off from the murder, leaving via an exit ramp before it crashed into a sign. Police identified the victim as Abigail Saldana, just 22 years old. The man who killed her is Stanley Seliga. She had complained about him previously, but nothing was done. Stanley had become so obsessed with the young woman that he started following her around. He harassed her, and he even put a tracker on her vehicle so that he always knew where she was. Creepy. Fellow employees knew that Abigail was frightened, but the police couldn't arrest Stanley because he hadn't physically done anything to her. Well, he finally snapped. As she drove along the highway, he came up beside her and unloaded his gun through her window, putting holes through her abdomen. The police eventually caught up to Stanley at his apartment, where they swiftly placed him under arrest for murder. Number 9. Fatal Shooting of a Texas Officer in Texas, strippers aren't the only people who find themselves on the wrong end of an ambush. A Texas deputy was recently caught in a fatal shooting during a traffic stop. Corporal Charles Galloway of the Harris County Precinct was ambushed by a man named Oscar Rosales. Oscar pulled out a gun and blasted the cop before he even had a chance to react. According to Houston Police Chief Troy Finner, they have video evidence of Oscar shooting the deputy. However, Texas is a big place. The killer has gotten away and is in hiding. The police have put up a $60,000 reward for any information that leads directly to his arrest. They won't stop until they have Oscar behind bars. Sadly, we don't know the exact motive. Charles Galloway was sitting in his patrol car when the motorist stepped out of his vehicle and opened fire with absolutely no warning. This was in a residential neighborhood, a place where you would never expect this kind of violence. Oscar had an assault rifle with him and unloaded the whole clip of the cop before driving away. So far, the only arrests that have been made are members of Oscar's family who were involved in helping him to escape, but they have refused to give up his whereabouts. Number 8. Strangled at Home Instagram model Mercedes Moore was strangled in her own home by a deranged stalker. The Instagram model, extremely successful with over 2 million followers, was found dead on the floor of her Texas home. The Fort Bend County Medical Examiner ruled the cause of death as strangulation. Mercedes, her real name Jeanne Gagné, suffered a traumatic concussion. The man who killed her, a 34-year-old maniac named Kevin Accorto, was also found dead in the house. He had multiple sharp force trauma wounds that he very likely inflicted upon himself after taking the young woman's life. But why did it have to end like this? Police have yet to disclose a motive. Yet, they have said that there was no indication the killer forced his way into the model's home. Nobody knows if she invited him in, if he snuck in like a sneaky burglar in the night, or if he somehow tricked her into opening the door. Whatever the case, he'd been stalking her for an undetermined amount of time, but it was long enough that Mercedes had complained about him to friends. She was worried about the psycho, but probably never imagined that he would actually find her house. She definitely wasn't prepared for him to get inside and murder her in an explosive fit of violent insanity. One of the most heartbreaking parts of the story is that Mercedes was found by her own father. He had called the police and asked them to perform a wellness check when his daughter stopped returning his calls. He was there with the cops when they opened the front door and found her cold and stiff on the floor. Number 7. With a bad boyfriend A Texas man named Quan Main Travion Boyd was on the loose after he abducted and killed his pregnant girlfriend. Houston authorities were working to locate the shooter, accused of capital murder in the death of Kavana Smith. Kavana was first abducted by her psychotic boyfriend on October 6th. A few days earlier, she had told her boyfriend she was pregnant. When the police searched Quan Main's home, 
they found a greeting card written by the victim, explaining how the baby wasn't what they expected, but that he should get ready to be a father. The greeting card also contained an ultrasound image of the baby from the day before. This man clearly was not ready to be a father. He lost his mind, kidnapped his girlfriend, and stuck her in the back of his truck. She managed to text her sister while being held captive, just shy of 7 o'clock in the morning. Her sister had tried to phone her back, but it went straight to voicemail. That text was the last message Gavana ever sent. Just after 7 o'clock in the morning, Juan Main took out his gun and shot Gavana directly in the face. She was dead immediately, and Juan Main fled in a white truck. She was found dead in the street less than three miles from her house. Last we heard, the murder's boyfriend is still at large. Number 6. Shot for getting lost Terry Turner killed a man for just being in his driveway. The Texas native has become the source of serious controversy in the state, bringing into the light some rather bizarre Texas laws that some say should be thrown out. It all started when Adil de Goey got lost and pulled into Terry's driveway. Adil just so happened to be a Muslim immigrant who arrived in the U.S. from Morocco back in 2013. He had borrowed his girlfriend's car after a barbecue outside San Antonio. On the way back home, it seemed he lost his way. He stopped and pulled over. That was when Terry saw a man he didn't recognize and that he didn't like the look of sitting in his driveway with his headlights on. What happened next is hard to find an excuse for. Terry Turner grabbed his gun and went outside. As he approached the car, it was already reversing out of the driveway. That didn't stop Terry from unloading his gun through Adil's windshield. A bullet went straight through his head, and Adil was dead before he even realized what was happening. Terry then called 911 and told them, I just killed a guy. Terry has been charged with murder, but his lawyers are trying to get him off. The lawyers are defending their client using the Stand Your Ground Law. This is a Texas law that allows any homeowner to use deadly force against somebody on their property if the action is seen as necessary. The whole point of the law is that a homeowner is allowed to stand the ground and defend themselves instead of retreating when under threat. The issue here is that Terry clearly wasn't under threat. What do you think the outcome of this case should be? Is Terry guilty of murder or did he just do what he thought was necessary to defend his home from a guy backing out of his driveway? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe before the end of the video. Number 5. Coaxing the Boyfriend Texas woman Jennifer Lynn Faith has been charged in a bizarre murder plot. She orchestrated the brutal killing of her husband, but it was actually her secret boyfriend who carried it out. The 49-year-old woman was married to American Airlines technology director named Jamie. She was also dating a man named Darren Ruben Lopez. On October 9, 2020, her boyfriend went to her house and opened fire on her husband while he stood on his lawn. It's not the killing itself or even the weird love triangle that's so strange. It's the way in which Jennifer convinced her boyfriend to do the killing. She came up with two fake email accounts and corresponded with her boyfriend under the guise of her husband, as well as one of her friends. She was eventually successful in convincing her boyfriend that she was being physically and sexually abused. This pushed Darren into a dark corner. He thought he was doing the right thing in liberating Jennifer from her tormentor. But in reality, it was all a depraved and calculated scam. Jennifer was sending Darren fake pictures of fake injuries. She pretended to brag about beatings as her husband, and she posed as a concerned friend who insisted the only way to get her out was through murder. Darren is now facing 10 years in prison, while Jennifer is looking at life. Number 4. Father and Son Murderers Police have identified a Texas teen, a boy just 14 years old, as being responsible for a triple murder at a convenience store. And while this type of thing may happen a lot in Texas, this story has a bizarre parental twist. The kid opened fire in the convenience store on Sunday, gunning down three people and injuring one more. But he had an accomplice. Garland police say it was his father who drove the getaway vehicle and who instigated the entire thing. The shooter is Abel Elias Acosta. His father is Richard Acosta Jr. The dad was arrested by police after they saw surveillance footage of him driving the white truck that his son used to get away after the murder spree. He's now facing a capital murder charge while his son faces three. But the cops have not yet been able to track down the teen, who's considered armed and extremely dangerous. But you've really got to wonder why a dad would drive their son to a convenience store to execute a bunch of people. The cops can't say for sure, 
but it may have been gang related. Sadly, one of the victims was a completely innocent bystander who went to pick up tacos for family dinner. Those taco shells ended up stained with blood. Number 3. The Old Lady Stalker A man in Texas killed 12 elderly women, but he may have killed dozens more. His name is Billy Chamirmir, 46, when he was indicted on six capital murder charges by a Dallas County grand jury. This was for the deaths of six women from between 2016 and 2018. But then a second grand jury in Collin County indicted the man on five additional murder charges. In total, police are very certain he killed a dozen elderly women. He stalked them, robbed them, and then disposed of them, usually by suffocation. But here's what's truly sickening. According to the Dallas police, investigators are now looking at the cases of over 750 elderly people who died in the state, checking to see if any of them are linked to our killer. The thing is that he often posed as a maintenance worker to gain access to facilities that house the elderly. Once inside, he stalked the halls looking for the perfect victim. He would find an old lady with lots of jewelry, then rob them and suffocate them for fun. Police know of 12 victims, but there could be potentially dozens, even hundreds. Billy may have been breaking into senior care facilities all over Texas and killing for years. Number 2. Trouble at Chuck E. Cheese In Texas, not even Chuck E. Cheese is a safe place. A man is in police custody after he allegedly shot and killed a father outside the popular kids entertainment complex. According to the victim's widow, she's glad the murderer is now behind bars. It unfolded like a nightmare. Calogero Duenes was outside the Chuck E. Cheese in Humble, Texas. He was about to celebrate his daughter's birthday with his wife and some friends. It was New Year's Eve and everybody was having a great time. At least they were, until a man named Antoine Daniel Badon drove the wrong way in the parking lot and almost ran Calogero over. The two got into a verbal argument and so Antoine pulled out a gun and shot the man three times. He then fled police couldn't find him, and he didn't show up until two days later. On January 2nd, Antoine was caught by police for shooting a man outside of a Wilson Food Mart. This guy was just going around and shooting people in the most unlikely places. After his arrest, police learned he had all kinds of prior allegations against him for beating up his own family members. Number 1. Evil Texas Nurse A Texas nurse had been found guilty of capital murder following the deaths of four of his patients. These patients died after being injected with air following life-saving heart surgeries. It took the jury in Smith County an hour to find William George Davis guilty. He'd been working as a nurse at the Christus Trinity Mother Francis Hospital in Tyler throughout 2017 and 2018. During this time, he developed a thirst for killing. As four completely random individuals were recovering from the surgeries, the killer nurse snuck up on them and injected them with air. Nobody knew what was happening, believing the victim suffered from unexplainable neurological problems that resulted in death. It wasn't until Dr. William Yarbrough, a pulmonologist and professor of internal medicine in the Dallas area, got involved that things started to make sense. He was able to determine that air had been pushed into the arterial system of the patients by looking at brain scans. The evil Texas nurse tried to defend himself by claiming he was the scapegoat for the hospital who messed up the surgeries. But that's not the way the jury saw it. They understood that David was just a sick individual who liked to kill people. He did it in the sneakiest way he had available to him, believing he wouldn't get caught. Plus, no other similar deaths have occurred since Davis left the hospital. Number 10. Beating up on the homeless Ex-NFL star Kellen Winslow had some serious mental problems. He was convicted of sexually assaulting a 58-year-old homeless woman and also for revealing himself in front of a random 77-year-old woman. He had a grotesque fascination with old ladies, despite the fact that he was married to a woman for 13 years and had two kids with her. The NFL star was married to Janelle Winslow, a woman most would agree is insanely beautiful. But even though he had a gorgeous wife at home, he was sexually assaulting homeless women in his spare time and giving unrequested views of his private parts to senior citizens. If you said, what the heck after hearing that, that is absolutely correct. What the heck? 
Kellen Winslow was the tight end for the Cleveland Browns before he was found guilty in May of 2018 for the incident with the homeless woman. He was also brought up on two counts of lewd conduct involving two other women. Oh yes, and then there was the incident of indecent exposure, which he was also found guilty of. That's four women he violated in total, although he still has eight remaining charges against him. It seems he was on a spree of lewd conduct, one that helped to ruin his career. If he's brought up on all the other charges, he'll probably be in jail for the rest of his life. He's already in jail, and he can't get out since the judge denied his request for a $1 million bail. Number 9. Threatening the Cheater NFL player Earl Thomas made headlines recently for some strange family drama. According to the police, his wife Nina Thomas discovered that she was being cheated on. Earl was fooling around with another woman on his Snapchat account. She was so mad that she got together with two of her friends and went to confront Earl where he was staying at an Airbnb. Once there, Nina stole her husband's pistol and scared him with it. She put the gun to his head and threatened to blow his brains out for being a cheating scumbag. Yikes. He may have been a cheater, but Nina definitely should not have put a gun to his head. She was arrested for burglary and intent to commit aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. However, Nina has denied all the allegations against her. She's gotten herself a lawyer and is now waiting for the day in court when she can clear her name. Suffice to say, the relationship between Earl and his wife is most likely over. Shortly after the incident, the Baltimore Ravens released Earl Thomas. It's in part because of his wife's defense. She has claimed that not only did Earl cheat on her, but he terrorized her repeatedly. He was inappropriate in front of the children. He got angry on Christmas and tried to beat her up in front of her family. And then he sent an adult video of them together to a group text between Nina's parents and their nanny. This kind of behavior just isn't appropriate in this day and age. And it looks like Earl's career might be over because of it. Number 8. Crash and Burn Henry Ruggs III was the wide receiver for the Raiders, but he ruined his own life, a whole bunch of other lives, along with his career, after he got drunk and ran into a woman and her dog. Henry was traveling at a blistering speed of 156 miles per hour. Just before he slammed into the back of a Toyota, he killed a 23-year-old woman in the car, while he himself got away with nothing more than a scratch on his face. He was driving his Corvette in Las Vegas at 3.40 in the morning, wasted out of his mind. His girlfriend was in the passenger seat, left in serious condition after the devastating accident. Henry was brought up on a charge of DUI, resulting in substantial bodily harm. But substantial bodily harm is really an understatement. The victim of his reckless driving, Tina Tinter, died from thermal injuries due to the motor vehicle collision. The Clark County coroner said that she basically burned to death. If this had been anybody else, they would have been sent to jail immediately. But the superstar was able to post bail of $150,000 and be put on house arrest. Now he's just lounging around at home like he's grounded, waiting for his court date. He could get up to 20 years in prison for his despicable crime. But then again, he might get nothing at all. Number 7. Revenge on the X In December of 2014, the police responded to a domestic dispute at the apartment of linebacker Jermaine Cunningham. Jermaine was then arrested and charged with invasion of privacy. It wasn't that he was beating up his girlfriend, but that she became furious after realizing he had posted inappropriate photographs of her on Instagram, tagging her in them without permission. He posted the most explicit photographs you can imagine of all their body parts for the world to see. This is a serious offense, and he was charged under New Jersey's revenge porn law. He was also charged with criminal mischief for destroying his girlfriend's property, as well as unlawful weapon transport for having a handgun in his glove compartment. That handgun happened to have hollow point bullets in it. According to court documents, Jermaine Cunningham pleaded guilty to the crimes. In June of 2015, he was sentenced to serve three years of probation and to undergo anger management counseling. He was suspended by the NFL for six weeks, but not outright fired. What kind of role do you think the NFL should play in these types of situations? Let us know your thoughts on this controversial issue in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Number 6. The Broke Life of Warren Sapp Warren Sapp had a great career. He dominated as one of the top defensive tackles in the NFL. He was a longtime player for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, then went into retirement. It was after his NFL career was already over, voluntarily mind you, that he began running into serious trouble. He became financially crippled 
and going so broke that he could no longer pay his child support. Finally, in 2012, he had to apply for bankruptcy. One of the big problems Warren had was that he had fathered too many children. During his career as an NFL star, which lasted about 13 years, he made a whopping $60 million. All that money helped him support an extremely large family. He married his first wife in 1998, Jamiko Vaughn. They had two children together, but they divorced in 2003, and he went on to father four children with four different women. That's a total of six children with five women. As you can probably imagine, that is a whole lot of child support. Despite being a millionaire, Warren lost all his money after he stopped playing football. In 2012, he had $826 in his checking account. Yet, on his bankruptcy paperwork, he had $6.7 million in debt. He still owed his wife $876,000 in alimony, as well as thousands of dollars per month that he was supposed to be paying all the other women who gave birth to all his other children. Warren finally hit rock bottom when he was arrested on suspicion of soliciting a prostitute. At the time, he was working as an analyst for the NFL Network, but they terminated his contract after he got busted. Even though the charges were dismissed in 2015, his life was already in ruins. Number 5. 30 Days for Murder Dante Stallworth, former wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns, was given 30 days in jail for killing a pedestrian in Florida. The former NFL star was just 28 years old when he committed this terrible crime in June of 2009. He got drunk, then climbed behind the wheel and drove his car through Miami Beach. He was so drunk that he drove his car right over a pedestrian. The pedestrian was 59-year-old Mario Reyes. Mario was running across the street to catch a bus when he was run down by the intoxicated football player. Let me give you an example of just how insane 30 days for this crime is. The average jail sentence for a similar crime in Florida, according to ABC News, is actually 10 years. And yet Dante, just because he's really good at throwing a football, only served 30 days. The authorities say his reduced sentence was due to his cooperation with the police and because the victim's family didn't want to see him locked up for years. Still, Dante didn't get off completely free. He had his driver's license suspended for life. He was ordered to pay a measly $10,000 in fines and he was ordered to do 1,000 hours of community service. And then, of course, he did need to serve two years of house arrest and spend the next eight years on probation. He also made a deal to donate $225,000 to Mothers Against Drunk Driving. But that was a bit embarrassing because the national president of MADD actually declined his money. Number 4. The Cult of Yahweh Robert Rozier played professional football for a few different teams. He was a defensive end drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals, but whose career was derailed after getting hooked on drugs and crime. He briefly played for a Canadian team before signing with the Oakland Raiders and playing with them for a rather brief two weeks. 1982 was when things got really weird for Robert. He met the founder of Yahweh Ben Yahweh and was inducted into their cult, the Nation of Yahweh. This was a religious movement back in the 80s that taught African Americans that they were the true Jewish people. New members donated all their possessions and then were given new Jewish names. But this group had a very violent method of business. To become a full member, an initiate needed to kill a random white person. In April of 1986, Robert followed a drunk white man back to his apartment and then butchered him and his roommate with a Japanese knife. But he didn't stop killing there. He and another member of the Brotherhood killed a drunk man who passed out in a bar parking lot and cut off his ears. Two weeks later, Robert and three other members of the cult killed another man by stabbing him 25 times. Robert was eventually apprehended by the police, whom he told some pretty strange things. He said he was 404 years old and couldn't remember any of his life before converting to the nation of Yahweh. But eventually, he changed his mind. He remembered a lot, stitching out on the cult in exchange for a reduced sentence of 22 years in prison. This ultimately led to a murder conspiracy indictment being brought up against the cult and their spiritual leader. Number 3. A Spree of Assaults Adam Jones, former NFL cornerback, has a long history of violence. He played for the Tennessee Titans, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Cincinnati Bengals. In August of 2006, he was accused by a woman of spitting in her face. That same night, Adam was arrested for disorderly conduct and public intoxication. Then in October, he was issued a citation for spitting in the face of another woman at a nightclub in Nashville. 
In February of 2007, he got in trouble for grabbing a stripper by the hair and punching her in the face. He also threatened to kill the employees of the strip club, which he may or may not have attempted. Shortly after he was kicked out of the club, somebody shot the place up. A female patron took a bullet to the head. One of the bouncers took one in the chest, and another bouncer had his spinal cord severed. The shooter was identified as Arvin Edwards and given four to ten years in prison. It was never confirmed beyond a doubt that he acted on orders from Adam Jones, despite investigators uncovering that Jones paid him tens of thousands of dollars following the shooting. After all these troubles, he never really had any repercussions. He got one year of probation and 200 hours of community service. He also had to pay $12.4 million in damages, but that wasn't a big deal considering he kept getting work. Football teams just kept hiring him, despite the fact that he was clearly a maniac. Finally, in 2021, he was convicted of assault for beating somebody up and given 180 days in jail. Number 2. Dogfighting Michael Vick was sentenced to spend 23 months in prison for running a dogfighting ring. He's one of the most disgraced NFL stars of all time and even received a harsher sentence than other people involved in the dogfighting ring. This is because he lied to the judge about his involvement in killing pit bulls. Michael was supposed to accept responsibility for his actions, but U.S. District Judge Henry E. Hudson wasn't convinced. Even though Michael surrendered and made a public apology, the judge didn't feel like he really accepted responsibility for killing pit bulls that didn't perform very well in the dogfights. So he gave him a harsher sentence than everyone else involved, allowing Michael to think about his crimes a little longer while sitting in jail. Michael was directly involved in electrocuting, hanging, drowning, and using other violent means to kill dogs that were no longer useful. Not only that, but Michael also promoted, funded, and facilitated dogfights, one of the most cruel and barbaric sporting events that is somehow still around. As hard as it is to believe, somewhere in a neighborhood near you, there are a bunch of people throwing their dogs into a gladiator pit. It's just that this time, because Michael Vick played football for the Atlanta Falcons, the case became national news. Number 1. Gone Broke Former Texas football star and NFL quarterback Vince Young is completely broke. He's one of the most notorious cases of a rich sports star losing all their money. He earned about $26 million in the NFL and then went bankrupt because he spent money as if it would never run out. One time, he didn't want to deal with any airport travelers so he bought an entire Southwest flight, every single seat on the plane. In just seven years, he went from having $25 million in the bank to being $10 million in debt. He spent over $5,000 a week at the Cheesecake Factory. He bought a bunch of expensive cars. He bought a house for his mom. And then suddenly, he couldn't even buy himself a pair of shoes. Who would be worse to have as a boss? Your ex's new partner or a former best friend who you had a falling out with? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.